Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys Secret Base figure preview video. Now before we begin, I do have to say a huge thank you to Ryan Kirkwood for going out in person and snapping these stunning high-res pictures. Now without Ryan, this series quite literally wouldn't be possible. So make sure you show him some love down in the comments below. If you are looking to pre-order your very own crosshair, he is available from toyswonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They do have installment plans and a points-based reward system. Now, we recently reviewed Echo on the channel and I really liked him. But I said in that review, oh, it could be years until we get the rest of the team. Hot Toys, I guess, heard the call and said, no, no, we're going to get right to it. He is Crosshair. However, we are still waiting on Omega and Wrecker and Tech and potentially an Imperial version of Crosshair. But for now, we've got Hunter, we've got Echo and we've got the just classic bad batch looking crosshair, which is my preferred look anyway. Do you hope Hot Toys will complete the team? Because, yeah, I reckon that's going to be a pretty common sentiment. It's a bit weird to have this be such a slow burn. I would have preferred to pre-order them all at once or maybe even in one big honkin' pack, because waiting years to finally and eventually build out your Bad Batch yeah, it's not ideal, at least for me personally. Now, he does come with the usual suspects for accessories, a full array of clone hands. We've seen them before, but this time the armor plating on the back of the palms is grey to match the rest of his armor. Of course it is. He comes with the full droid popper grenade and the half one, so you can either set it on the base or... If Hot Toys ever get around to making us some clankers, then you can hopefully pop it on one of them, maybe just lying on the ground as though it's about to pop off, droid popper. I'm so sorry, I had to. You also get a bunch of attachments for his blaster. It looks like that's some kind of silencer and a couple of other little doohickeys. You will be seeing the rifle in just a second. Now, they're painted well. Some pieces look slightly metallic but all of them look really nicely weathered. They're dirty, they're grimy, there's some dry brushing, there's a bunch of that kind of grey speckling. It gives it that chalky aesthetic, just like we saw in the show. But this, for me, is the icing on the cake. It's the unmasked crosshair head sculpt. And this, even though Echo looked pretty different to how Tamura Morrison actually looks. Obviously, he was gaunt and pale and creepy looking. This might just be the biggest departure from Tamura Morrison's likeness out of the bunch. He's also quite gaunt. He's got the grey hair. He's got the crosshair kind of scar on his right eye. And I really like the teeny tiny toothpick. A very nice touch, Hot Toys. I'm hoping it's removable in case you don't want it there, but... In the show, he kind of always had a toothpick anyway, it's just part of his attitude. You also have a decent level of skin texture and stubble. I'm really happy. We do also get one of these stickers that you pop on top of the display base. If you want, it's up to you. Dig the red, dig the Bad Batch logo, and Crosshair's helmet. Do you all actually use those base toppers? I know I don't, but... I just like everything being consistent, therefore I'll just opt for the Imperial style flooring, but please let me know, is that something you actually use, or does it go straight back in the box after your unboxing? Now as for Crosshair himself, using a standard Hot Toys clone trooper body makes total sense to me. His shoes are different to Echo's, these look more like the regular clone trooper shoes, but are they supposed to be such a drastically different colour to the rest of the armour? I didn't think they were supposed to be, I thought everything would match, but they're a hell of a lot lighter as compared to the shin guards and the rest of his suit too. I don't know if you all know this, but I really dig the red, dark grey and black aesthetic. I love the look of the Bad Batch. Even though I didn't like the show, I actually said that in my Echo review and some people really weren't very happy because at the start I said, yeah, I like certain things about the show, meaning the designs and some of the looks of the characters, such as the Clone Commandos, please Hot Toys get that done. 
but overall, I just wasn't a fan of the series. This, though, is a really cool looking clone trooper. It's something different. It's technically a unique main character, not just a generic 501st clone. So if you are building out your Star Wars, Clone Wars, and Bad Batch display, it makes a little bit more sense than just picking up a random generic clone, like I said. Now, the rest of the armor is painted in the same style as everything else. It's this darker gray with the lighter gray chalky shading slash dry brushing. It looks bang on to what we saw on screen, and it looks really cool here in figure formats. It looks like it's scratched, it's weathered, it's dirty, it's grimy. But one thing that stands out as not being any of that stuff is the undersuit. It's that ribbed fabric which is perfect for posing. You can pretty much do whatever you want. You can have him kneeling down, aiming his sniper rifle, or running through the field with the rest of the team. But it is very clean compared to everything else. Previously, someone said, Justin, you moron. Of course it's clean. They would wash the undersuit, but not the armor. Okay, that makes sense in your head cannon, but honestly, when you see a really stark, beautifully pristine black suit against the rest of the battle damage armor, your eyes kind of immediately go to it because it doesn't blend in well. Does it look terrible? No, it doesn't look terrible. It's just something to be aware of. Something else to be aware of is the pleather. That's right, Hot Toys have struck again. There is pleather here. The belt is pleather. The strap that goes over his chest is also pleather. I'm hoping that it stands the test of time, but there was really no reason whatsoever that that couldn't have been sculpted. I mean, the pouch that's quite literally on that pleather belt is sculpted, so they can do it, but... They just decided, well, we're hot toys, we need to include some pleather, and oh yes, that's exactly what they did. The chest kind of reminds me of a clone commando, or even hunter, it's a little bit bigger and bulkier. Dig the red, dark grey, and lighter grey aesthetic once again. That little kind of chest plate piece is also pleather, red pleather and black pleather combined, so it's a two for one. On one side, you've got this massive fin. Now, I'm not exactly sure what this is for, but someone told me previously that this was some kind of guide for his rifle or something to do with how he aims it. If it is, that's really cool. If it's just a design feature, then it's still really cool. That's like one of the main reasons why I'm even looking at these guys to begin with. Not being a fan of the show, they just need to look really dope. And that they do. They're going to stand out thanks to the super punchy red. I mean, the Hot Toys display is pretty color neutral. We've got browns, we've got beiges, we've got whites, maybe some blues here and there, but some vibrant red is only usually reserved for the Sith and the evil characters. So when you pop these guys alongside your stark white clone troopers, oh yes, they are 100% going to stand out in the display. Plus, Crosshair has this huge honking rifle. I cannot wait to pose this guy up aiming down the sights of this gun. It's really different. I also love the way it's sculpted. It's kind of animated, but also realistic thanks to the paint job. There are washers in the crevices. It's got that speckled, chalky look. I know, I've said that a bunch, but... I honestly can't think of a better way to describe the aesthetic here. It looks animated because of that chalky aesthetic. It's kind of synonymous with the look of Clone Wars and Bad Batch, and I think Hot Toys nailed it here. One thing to keep in mind, though, is the rifle is very, very big. I know y'all can see it, but it looks at least one Omega tall, which means in the display, if you're kind of popping him in close quarters alongside other clones, maybe towards the front of your display, then you're going to have to factor that in mind because this rifle is one big boy. Up the top at the end of the barrel, I do like that attachment with the kind of smoky tip as though it's been fired recently. I am curious to see how the bits and pieces swap out, which combinations I prefer. I reckon I'll go with the other barrel tip that's slightly darker in color, just like the rest of the rifle. He does have a backpack, like Echo, 
wouldn't be surprised if it's magnetic. That just makes the most sense here. Now, the helmet. This is the stuff right here. I am in love with the look of Crosshair's helmet. It's, once again, very different. It's going to stand out from the crowd. I love the Crosshair symbol on the visor and... It's an asymmetrical visor. I don't think we've seen that before with this kind of oval-shaped cutout up top. So, of course, he can get a better line of sight down the sight on the rifle. Once again, I'm so sorry. He also has the fully articulated rangefinder, the red stripe up top, and kind of this skull motif on the front of the helmet that comes down to this very long snoot with some mandibles as well. Now, this is a very angular helmet design. I wouldn't be surprised if it's not for everyone, but I've said this before, and I'm about to say it again, it's definitely for me. In saying that, though, I've got a question for you, and it's a two-parter. Number one, is this guy for you? Number two, if Hot Toys made Imperial Crosshair, you know, the look that he had for most of the first season, would you double dip on Crosshair, or are you like me, just thinking, no, no, this is the preferred look? I would still pick up the second Crosshair, do a comparison, let you know which I prefer in hand, because it's a really cool look too with the green lenses, but... I don't know if there's enough love for this character and for this show for Hot Toys to go ahead and make two different versions. Once again, I pose that question to you. Let me know down below. I will, of course, be picking this guy up, adding him to the Clone Wars and Bad Batch display. So for now, even though, once again, I didn't love the show, I'm still pretty darn excited to have another super different looking Clone Trooper for the collection. Now, if you are looking to pre-order this guy, he is available from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They do have installment plans and a points-based reward system. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.